on, buddy. Okay. You haven't heard John Scalinas. You haven't been to a baseball clinic. John? If you can't control a head mentally or physically, you better go to work in a hardware store. Check with Rob Dato on that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a few minutes on the mental part and on the physical part dealing with the head. First of all, you coaches, there's four great abilities. Do you hear me? Four great abilities in coaching. This is what you're working toward, and you're going to be in good shape if you can develop them. Four. First great ability is the ability to recognize ability. Second great ability is the ability to surround yourself with ability. Third great ability is the ability to utilize ability. And the fourth great ability is the ability to develop ability. And that's what you guys are basically here, getting ideas how to develop ability. Yeah, I didn't have this in my young days. I had Dale and Reichel and Dutch, Fern and those guys. They helped me out. You guys are very fortunate, got great speakers, and I think it's fantastic. Now remember, let me say something about the ability to recognize ability. Not only in ball players, but who are you help, who's helping you? What kind of a guy is he? Which comes into the point, the second great ability, surround yourself with ability. Hey, let's face it. If I surrounded myself with donkeys over the years, you think I'd be up here talking to you people? I'd be down in Donkeyville with all the other donkeys. <laughs> That's true. That's what I want to bring up into here. This is important. You want to last? You better listen to me. You want to listen to me. The third deal is the ability to utilize ability. Remember that day I had a couple of guys at Kingman and McGuire came to Rod Data was pitchers. He made an outfielder out of Kingham and made a first baseman out of McGuire and they're both millionaires. So that's that point again. Hey, there might be a guy in the wrong spot. That's your job to work toward that. Okay? Work toward that deal. Now I want to get into the seven balls of baseball because you people have got to recognize the seven balls. This is important. You learn to recognize these seven balls, and then you deal with them accordingly. This is important if you want to last in coaching. I know a lot of guys, they don't last because of their inability to recognize the seven balls and work toward something about changing them. The first ball is an oddball. Guy's got those guys. Guy's got a building as an oddball. Might show up with a couple of air rings and a handband or something. Hey, you can work with that guy and help that guy. No question about it. The next one, snot ball. You know what a snot ball is? I'll tell you what a snot ball is, crying all the time. <laughs> crying all the time. Mounds too low. You got a bad background. That umpire's not giving me anything. You got to blow his nose every third inning. You can straighten that guy out too. You gotta, you gotta recognize this. Don't baby him. Tell him he's a snot ball. <laughs> that guy's gonna change. The next one, pest ball. You don't believe me, you get a ball and fill it with pus. And then try to get a, a fistful of it. Can't do it. Why? No stability. Puss goes right through your hand. You got that ball player. He's got ability, but no stability. Even see some of the big leagues. Work with that guy. Get some stability. Now you got a good ball player. The next one you got to start looking out for. That's the jerk ball. You got to keep an eye on this guy. There's a jerk ball, is that I-I-this guy. 
Chapter one, he wrote the book. Chapter one, I. Chapter two, me. Chapter three, mine. <laughs> Chapter four, what's in it for me? All that guy's concerned about is himself. Forget the ball club. You gotta work with that guy. Because this guy can go into the next ball, and that's the screwball. Now let me tell you what a screwball is. You talk, you have Brad up here talking. You talk to yourself. You're all right. You talk to yourself, and you answer yourself. You're still all right. I do it all the time. <laughs> the screwball. The screwball talks to himself, answers himself, and then he says, "Huh." <laughs> hey, hey, it might sound funny, but you better keep an eye on that screwball. You know why? Huh? He doubts. He'll doubt you as a coach. When he starts doubting you as a coach, he crying got me a button for crying out hitting 150. I should be hitting. He starts doubting you as a coach, then look out. He starts spreading like grass to the rest of the ball club. And then you got the rest of the ball club start doubting you as a coach. You got troubles, buddy. You got troubles. You got to straighten that guy out. Because he can go into that donk ball. That's the donkey. Now uh, listen, you guys got a donkey. That's that guy that he, he'll be, he'll destroy the ball club. And what happens, the guy could have ability. That's what you got to look out for. A donk ball or a donkey with ability can destroy the ball club. You got to use psychology, my Scalina psychology on that guy. Get rid of him. <laughs> hey. There's only, as far as I'm concerned, there's only one person that can handle the donkey. That's Christ Almighty. Hey, Palm Sunday, he came into Jerusalem riding what, a Cadillac? He came riding on a donkey. He's trying to tell us, send me the donkeys. I'll handle them. That's true. If he doesn't want to go to him, you better send him to Diddy Wad Diddy. <laughs> Taint no town, taint no city, just a little place called Diddy Wad Diddy. That's the capital of Siberia. <laughs> All right, now what you guys, hey, the, what you're trying to work these guys into is that hardball. The hardball. That's, and listen, that can be coached. Give a kick what you say. I'm not saying all of them, but you're working toward that to develop hardballs, mentally tough guys, guys that are for the ball club, guys that can adjust. You heard about guys making adjustments, adjustability. You got that good attitude. They got the three C's, class, character, and concern. These guys are they're, they're good. Good guys for the ball club. Like the old saying goes, good guy to have in a ball club. They've got that. What do you call that? Desire? Baloney. You guys take those guys with, I can load up a Greyhound bus with guys with desire in 20 minutes. You know what I want? And I know you guys want them. Intense desire, and there's a difference. Chuck, get up here. <laughs> hey, you know, surround yourself with good people. Here's like a head coach. Got a guy like this guy, you're in great shape. I got Coach Osaki. I got Lagos helping me here. You're going to hear Rogers. A couple of guys, well, that guy helped me. You'll listen to that guy. This guy's good. Now listen, we're going to demonstrate here. Now this is important because it can be coached. Okay? The difference between desire and intense desire. All right, the first one. You got desire? He's got desire. Here we him. All right, here it is. Now, we're going to demonstrate it in a boxing situation. He's got desire, OK? Now, he represents the ball player, OK? He represents, could be the coach, too, or the ball player. I represent 
represent all the negatives. I represent the strikeout. I represent the air, bases on, balls, getting picked off, thrown to the wall, all that negative I represent. He's the ball player, okay? Here we go, two fighters. Get up. You got desire? Look where his head is. You see where his head is? Huh? Right in his jack. Get up. Get up. <laughs> Trying to get up. You got desire. Let me tell you something on that jock. Got the head in the jock, still trying to get, still got his head in his jock. You got to tell the ball players that jock is to protect the family jewels, not your head. <laughs> and he's still down there. Got desire. All right. Remember, he's got desire. That's why he was trying to get up, right? He's looking around. Game's over. All right, now, this is intense desire. And this can be taught. Baseball, anything else. And if you think it's easy, it's not easy. But if you work at it, you work at it. Hey, you want to, go, you want to be a good piano player? You got to work at it. You want to be a good hitter? You got to work at it. You want to be a good pitcher? You got to work at it. You want to be a good person? You got to work at it. Want intense desire? You got to work at it. Here it is. Same thing. He's the ball player. I'm all the negative. Here we go. Watch him closely. Hey, I want, now listen, if you guys watched him closely, come up here, we'll go slow motion. <laughs> hey, this is important. Hey, who hasn't got knocked in his keister? I'm going to see that guy. Herbo, don't get up. Hey, but the thing is, don't make a career out of it down there. Get up. But no, listen, I decked him. Here he was. Now watch, I decked him there. Now when he came back out, what did he do? He made what? An adjustment. Just didn't get up, pick his nose, he made an adjustment. Well then I saw another opening, I decked him again. He made what? He made another adjustment. That's the key. Law of cause and effect, what happened? You teach him to make that adjustment and get up. Okay? Hey, you guys got their head in their jacks. Don't give them that one hour speech. I'll give you a speech in here, it'll take you 60 seconds. You got your guys in, they got their heads in their jack, this is what you can do. <laughs> tell you people, hey, you got to tell them. You can't pussyfoot around and hold her hand. You're a snot ball. Come on. You're a pus ball. Come on. You got to tell them. That'll wake them up. 
your baby here, your baby. That's when they baby in Little League, they baby in high school, then they baby him in college, the guy gets in the pro ball, and you got a big baby with ability. And you gotta get Sigmund Freud in the ball club. Drive <laughs> oh, you crazy. Now right, listen. Hey, now we're gonna go over some home drills, all right? Now you got that mentally tough guy. Don't worry about that guy. He's gonna, he's gonna work on his own. Your job is to get those DHs and NPs. Now I'm not talking about a designated hitter. I'm talking about those deadheads and those nose pickers. You gotta work with those guys, those guys majoring in TV commercials to do some homework. Hey, you can't hit. You don't get enough hitting there at, at, at school. You don't. You gotta, you gotta practice at home. You gotta do some homework. Now these drills that we're having here is for home. The guy can do it in his room all by himself. Now we got a lot of great uh, uh, apparatuses down there. I think are fantastic. Okay, but this here, the kids by himself. He can do these, and he can develop himself into a hitter. No question about it. All right? These are the, he's going to start demonstrating these. Now, Chuck's got a cold. I'm gonna, I was hoping he could do some talking for crying out loud. But he's got a cold. Can you say something on it, Chuck? All right, you got the, all right, I got, all right, listen. Now, listen. Listen here. You're working on the hands. All right? Head still. Working on the hands. All right, working on the hands. Now, in step net, okay, Chuck. Hey, send him a program. All right, ten. Ten of these. Ten of each thing that we do, and then you got a chance the kid might do something. Take it 10, 15 minutes. All right, 10, 15 minutes, and you demonstrate. You might have some other ones, but you demonstrate what you want him to do, or have a ball player demonstrate and put the clock on him. Gee, these guys, oh, I have 15 minutes, great. I can look at TV for three hours then. You follow my point? Get the guy to do something. If you get him doing something for 10 minutes, he might maybe go to 20. But your job as a coach, get him to do some homework. And you got a chance for the kid to develop. Otherwise, forget it. All right, the next drill. This is a drive and pop. Drive and pop up, elbows in here. Front side closed, pivot on the back side, head still. And when he's doing this, when he's doing this, now he's always visualizing hitting the ball. Work on visualization. Dr. Bill Harrison, I think, is one of the best on vision dynamics. Well, we've used that guy to the hill. He's done a great job. But you visualize hitting the ball. All right, what's the next one, Chuck? Yokohama. I picked this up in Japan. This is uh, like a jet. I modified it a little bit. Dacho Dachi sign, you guys know them. Dato's good friend. This guy, a great coach. Now, this is hand action, okay? You're working on back speed, and you're working on high and tight, low and away, okay? Keep your head still, front side in, open. Boom, 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 okay? You can do it. Now, one hand. Now, we're not, I'm not advocating one-hand swing. If I'm, I'm not going to go into that. I like them two hands myself. But this is the build-up, that one arm, you know, that, your non-dominant arm. I'm a left-hand hitter, that's my right arm. The right-hand hitter, it's my left one. You want to build that baby up so you can get some extension. Now, as a kid, start him off with a light, and then get him to get that heavy deal. Kid can't afford weights. Try this will build him up. Blow that thing up. Do that again, Chuck. One hand. Okay? Gee whiz. Hey, Mike, gonna, gonna end up in Basrami Heights. All right, what's the next one we got? All right, put it all together. Put it all together. Now, he's working on this is important. You're putting it all together, but you're visualizing. Okay? You're visualizing, and what you can do on this deal in here, you're visualizing hitting a fastball low and away, visualize hitting a fastball high and tight, visualize hitting a curveball, visualize hitting the slider, visualize hitting the changeup, split finger, 10 each. That's all. Don't go more than that, just tell them 10 each. 
work on visualization. I can't emphasize that enough. Okay, I can't emphasize that enough. Let me tell you a true story. I'm in L.A. and some of you guys were there, I don't know, 15 years ago? When are we going to get out in L.A. again? It must have been, Ted Williams is a featured speaker talking on hitting. I heard him about four times. He only brought this up once. One time he brought this up. And I don't think he understands the importance of it. And the reason he brought it up, a guy asked him a question out of the audience. He says, Ted, if you had to do it all over again, what would you do? His answer, I would swing the bat more. And then he went on to say, nobody swung the bat more than I did. And I'm sitting there talking to myself. I says, you're nuts, Ted. I swung the bat more than you. I'm talking about, I was in D leagues and C leagues and I was playing 0 for 4, 0 for 8. I'm up in a two bed hotel. I'm swinging, I'm swinging, I'm swinging. Then he went on to say, you know, he says when I was at high school in San Diego, so I'd come home, I'd get that bat, I'd see myself hitting off a Carl Hubble. Who did he pick? Some donkey? He picked the best. I hit his good curveball. Don't you talk about vivid visualization, imagination. I hit his good curveball off of the wall. Oh, man, that's, this is now. And I tell my ball players, I tell them this story, true story. I says, you want to be like Scalinas, or do you want to be like Ted Williams? <laughs> Scalinas swung for exercise. <laughs> Ted Williams swung with a purpose. And, and listen, if you guys can get those guys on this visualization, I think it's most important. Most important. Same thing on pitching. Say they talked about that pitch. I remember this guy, Brown Dell, I went to speak at a clinic, and the guy, I asked him about, con, uh, you know, control. He said, I never worry about control. I just see where I want the ball to go, and I see it go, and I pitch. The guy went in to speak in the clinic, never even brought it up. Ted never knew the, the importance of it. Neither does Brown Dell understand the importance of that visualization. Okay? How much time we got? Ten. Ten. Huh? Get that card. The card with the balls on it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Where's that card? Hey, here's another drill, home drill. Have the kid, have the kid on the, uh, you guys see that? Make his own strike zone. Show him the deal. Make his own strike zone. You guys got that? Anybody see that? Make his own strike zone. Put him on a chair. Get the thing going. He'll set it up where it's about the, the size. Okay, now he's going to work on putting the bat on the plane of the ball. This is at home now. You got that? These are home drills. Okay, so what he's doing is a front, there's a front view now, so he's working on uh, high and tight. Now he's trying to get the, and you can see that, baby. All right, then work on low and away. Now you say it's out in front, you're going to meet the low pitch back here. True. Just get the bat on the plane of the ball. You got something to go on here, okay? All right, and then he's got a front view, now get a side view. Same thing. Same thing. Have the kid make his own strike zone. Get the bat on the plane of the ball, okay? Now we got one other drill here. I call it a two bit drill. Well, you can use a baseball, we got a wiffle ball. And this year you can do it at home in a wiffle ball, you're not going to break the furniture. Hey, this uh, I'll have a tough time. Okay? Just keep hitting that baby. And listen, as a kid gets good, get him at the end of the bat and do it. And get a heavy bat. Well, crying out loud. Can you guys visualize that? Good drill. Then work on the down, non-dominant. You guys think this is easy? Right, give me a volunteer up here. You guys think it's easy? It's tough. I had a guy do 50, good hitter. But I tell you, on this drill here, you got, you got what? You got three things. You got the point on hand, hitting the ball, coordination there. You got concentration, and you're working on building up your hands, 
forearms, okay? It's a good drill. Now, to start off, you have the kid choke up on it. You follow me? Choke up on it. Not very good. I only hit 270. <laughs> uh, and now, like I say, as he gets good, get him at the end. Kid can do this at home. Then try to have him set a goal. You heard a couple of you have a goal. 10. When he hits 10, I'm going to 15. If fit, going to 20. Good drill, people. Good drill. All right, now, I'm going to go on this uh, pie pan deal. Hey. What's the lighter bed, Chuck? Uh, hey, I'm like I say, hey, you keep control of my head, you control the rest of the body. Give me a kick what you're talking about. Okay? You control the head, control the rest of the body. Good drill. Hey, that uh, Danny Littweiler's got this new deal down there. I'm not, I'm not f familiar with it, but I got one thing. I say, well, if Danny says it's good, it's good. But this deal into here, you, anytime you swing with two hands, what do you say, I'm bald headed? Well, uh, that's an advantage. If you're a pinhead, you get trouble. If you're a pinhead, <laughs> you might have to go to this. That's easier. This is tougher, okay? If you guys think it's easy, Get up here. <laughs> when you want, hey, let me tell when you got the head steady, you guys, what happens to the eyes? The eyes are steady, you can focus in. You talked about who's talking about that bread on being smooth. If your head is still, you're smooth. You got balance. Control the head. Now I don't, I'm not saying you do this at, at home, okay? Do it at home in two hands. Let me tell you another story. True story. Uh, Mellot. If it wasn't for McGuire, you'd never heard of the guy. Hall of Famer. There's a little guy. He reported to the Giants. Here's the way the guy would swing. All right? Let me get that baby on there. Stay on there. There's Mellot. Okay. The coaches, see, we gotta change this guy, John. So what did McGraw say? Leave him alone. He was hitting the ball good. This guy never hitting the big leagues. That's the coaches are telling him. So what does McGraw say? He says, look at his head. You guys look at his head. move, did not move. The guy's in the Hall of Fame. Otherwise, he would have been gone. Probably changed the guy. Sahara O. <laughs> Head still. There was a guy in the Coastal League. I'll never forget this guy. Smooth as silk. I must have got killed in the war because I never saw him ever. I've got his name. <laughs> Here's the, hey, this is the way this guy hit. This is the way the guy hit. One of those walk hitters. Smooth as silk. Oh, beautiful looking hitter. There was a guy named Steve Mesner. I don't give a kick what you do, keep the head still. That Yokohama drill. Low and away, high and tight. Good drill. Then do it one hand. Try it, okay? Good drill, people. And you go on speed. That Yokohama drill is a good one. On, uh, you know, after a heavy bat. Get a heavy bat. After the guy gets pretty good, give him a heavy bat to build up those arms and hands. And then have him do it with a light one, like this, or a broomstick or something. 
You get extension on that. If I don't get extension, this is what happens. Follow me? Knock it off. You get that extension in one hand. One hand. Build up that arm. Hey, let me show you one thing before I close here. You guys heard Jimmy LaFever up here this morning? Tell you about this guy. Talk about intense desire. I'm sitting there listening to him. I remember the kid was in high school. High school. Not a very good ball player. I know the old man good. I asked him how he's doing. His old man's in bad shape. Benny LaFever, good man. I never wanted him. I, I think it wasn't that good. It wasn't, but the guy worked. Benny worked with him hard. The kid worked. He had that intense desire. Big league ball player, big league manager. I'm sitting there. Can you imagine? Don't tell me you can't develop a kid. Don't tell me that, baloney. They're born that way. Uh -uh. You're not going to make them. Got to have some kind of coordination in that. It's just like a jerk ball. Hey, not born a jerk. I never saw a baby that was a jerk. Huh? <laughs> The guy learns to be a jerk. <laughs> True. True. And you guys, he's getting a little bit old. It's getting a little bit tougher to change that guy. What we forget, Chuck? Thank you. The hitter's got a bat in his hand. Kind of a hitter. Offhand hitter. <laughs>